Hey, yo everyone, Andrew here bringing you another video. And today we're going to be doing our very first session of getting to know. Now, for those of you that don't know what this is, uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down with you and talk to you guys about a comic book character. And what I will do is I'll get into a history of the character and their powers and abilities and give you guys a suggestive reading order and why I love this character and give you an opportunity to really get to know them without having to go out of your way to spend money and do research and, and, and take a risk on something that you may or may not like. And that's really kind of the purpose of this is that oftentimes in comic books or just in general media, I'm very hesitant with trying to jump into something new. Often it takes someone to really push me to say, hey, Andrew, you should really try Game of Thrones. It's freaking fantastic. Or, hey, Andrew, you should try to read Harry Potter. Like, I know it's kind of for kids, but adults love it too. Like, but the only thing that I don't need pushing for is comic books. With comic books, I started off with mainly just Batman, and eventually my curiosity sprung, and I went into other comic book characters. Now, I've been fortunate enough in my life to be able to move maneuver myself correctly to be able to read so many characters and not have to worry about it uh, time-wise or financially. Um, however, I know not everyone's in the same situation. Some people are strapped for cash, or some people are strapped for time, or some people just are nervous about getting into someone. So I made these videos or I'm going to be making these videos, in order for you guys to get a chance to know a character and decide for yourself whether or not it's something that you want to take a risk on. Because that's the biggest thing. Getting into a new hobby or a new reading or anything like that, there's always a risk to it. So with that said, we're going to jump into our first getting to know. And you guys had the opportunity to vote on it in my previous video. I gave you guys a theme of the Robins, and you could get to know one of the Robins. Uh, you can get to know Dick Grayson, the first Robin, also known as Nightwing. You could get to know Jason Todd, the second Robin, also known as the Red Hood. Or you could get to know Tim Drake, the third Robin, also known as Red Robin. The votes were in, and you guys decided that you wanted to get to know Tim Drake, the third Robin. So, with that said, we're going to talk a bit about Tim Drake, and we might as well start with his history and backstory, and no better place to start Tim Drake's story than with Jason Todd. You're probably wondering, why Jason Todd? Well, see, in the Batman universe, there are multiple Robins. It's not just one Robin. There's been several. Four, technically five. If you count Elseworlds, there's more, but the, the most common ones and well-known are First, Dick Grayson, the original Robin. Now, Dick eventually grows up to become Nightwing and uh, lead the Teen Titans, and he graduates from the title of Robin. And taking his place would be Jason Todd, the second Robin, who dies and eventually comes back to life and becomes Red Hood. After Jason Todd comes Tim Drake. And then from there, you get Damian Rain, Stephanie Brown, and so on and so forth. But like I said, Tim's story really starts with Jason, because Jason died. As Robin, he was killed off by the Joker. And because of this, this has negatively affected Batman in multiple different ways. But Tim Drake, a young boy, notices that Batman has become sloppy. That he's taking risks and allowing himself to make mistakes. And because of this, he may not live that much longer because he's becoming so reckless. So Tim Drake does something that no other person has really ever done. He deduces who Batman is without actually Batman telling him that he's Bruce Wayne. And he does this through a unique kind of fashion. He explains this to uh, Dick Grayson. He says that he knew Dick Grayson when he was younger. He got to go to the Haley Circus, and from there, he got to see Dick Grayson perform as a, a, a tightrope walker and a, a trapeze artist and a, basically just an acrobat. And he noticed that Dick Grayson was well known for doing a maneuver called the quadruple somersault. Now, on the night that he got to see Dick Grayson was also the night that Dick Grayson's parents were killed. Batman comforted Dick Grayson, and eventually Bruce Wayne adopted him as his ward. Now, what was interesting is, shortly after Bruce adopted Dick as his ward, Tim saw that Robin showed up, this kid's sidekick. And what's more interesting is, one night, Robin does the quadruple somersault, which is a maneuver only three people in the world know how to do, and only one of which is a teenager with uh, black hair. 
So he deduces that Robin has to be Dick Grayson. And seeing Dick Grayson is Bruce Wayne's ward, that means Batman has to be Bruce Wayne. He goes on to tell Dick Grayson this, and he tells him even more that eventually Robin disappears and the, the persona of Nightwing shows up. Shortly after, Dick Grayson grows up and goes to college and moves in with the Teen Titans. And then a new Robin showed up shortly after Bruce Wayne gets a new ward, which is Jason Todd. But that Robin disappears around the same time Jason Todd disappears as Bruce Wayne's ward. So he then deduces exactly who Jason Todd is as the second Robin and that he was killed as Robin as well as Jason Todd was no longer Bruce Wayne's ward. Again, he keeps on telling Dick this. And the reason why he's telling Dick this is he's saying, Dick, Bruce needs you. I know you're Nightwing, but we need you to become Robin again. Batman needs the light in his life to be remembered what his life was before his parents were killed. And Robin helped him do that. Without Robin, he's not focused. He's dangerous. He's reckless and careless. But Dick Grayson repeats, I'm no longer Nightwing. I am Robin. I mean, I'm no longer Robin. I am Nightwing. Well, that would have been a screw-up. But I, I'm Nightwing now, and I will help Bruce, but I will help Bruce as Nightwing. And he does so, but it's not enough, because Bruce, at this point, is taking on one of his most dangerous foes, Two-Face. So, in a very bold act, Tim Drake decides to don Jason Todd's Robin costume and go out and save both Batman and Nightwing. Very clumsily, by the way. I mean, this kid never had any training before, but he does so. And through a long discussion, him and Dick Grayson both agree and convince Bruce Wayne that Batman needs a Robin. But it's going to be under Batman's rules. Tim Drake needs the right amount of training, and he needs to be 100% loyal to what Batman says. And Tim Drake agrees to do so. And thus is the birth of the new dynamic duo, Bruce Wayne, Batman, Tim Drake, Robin. And during Tim Drake's tenure as Robin, he's probably one of the most prolific ones next to Dick, uh, Dick Grayson. He is with Batman during one of some of his most trying hours, such as his back getting broken, or the contagion being li uh, let loose on Gotham, or the cataclysm of the earthquake, all the way up to the battle with Hush, and even the return of Jason Todd. He has seen a lot of action with Batman, and during this time, Tim Drake also joins a group called Young Justice, along with other preteen and teen superheroes such as Superboy, Connor Kent, and Cassandra Sandmark, Wonder Girl, all of which, well, most of which of the team, graduated up to becoming members of the Teen Titans, and like his predecessor before him, Tim Drake eventually becomes the leader of the Teen Titans, taking control of the team after the Infinite Crisis. Now, eventually, in his career as Robin, Batman disappears. Now, everyone thinks Batman dies, but in actuality, he gets sent back in time, so that's a different story for a different time. But, during this time, Tim Drake is the only person that believes that Batman is still alive. So, he decides to go look for him, but... He's worried that during this search, he may cross a line, and in doing so, he could sully the name of Robin. So he decides to discard the Robin identity, which is eventually picked up by the fourth Robin, which is Tim, um, which is Damian Rain, or fifth Robin if you count Stephanie Brown, but that's again a different discussion. And he, dis uh, he dons the persona of Red Robin. And uh, during this time, Red Robin kind of takes a step in a darker direction than what he was when he was Robin, uh, becoming colder and more calculating in doing what needs to be done. He also takes on some of his most fierce villains, coming ahead with the likes of such as Rachel Ghoul. Now, Bruce Wayne eventually returns back to the fold, and instead of going back to being Robin, he stays with the persona of Red Robin. But shortly after this happens, so does the New 52. Now, for those of you that don't know what the New 52 is, basically in 2011, DC decides to do a uh, medium reboot slash hard reboot of the DC Universe. Uh, many of the characters' histories stay the same, but many of the characters' histories change. Some characters, like Batman, were relatively unaffected. Maybe some details were changed here and there, 
Same with Nightwing or Jason Todd, um, but Tim Drake is relatively the same. The major ta uh, change with Tim Drake, other than his costume being completely different as Red Robin, is the fact that he was never a member of Young Justice in Teen Titans. No, rather, his introduction into the New 52 is him forming the Teen Titans. So, with the New 52 history, the new version of the Teen Titans are created with the likes of Superboy, Wonder Girl, Solist, Kid Flash, Bunker, and Skitter for some time. And other members join, like Raven, Power Girl, um, Beast Boy, and so on and so forth. But this is really where Tim Drake is shown in the New 52, part of the Teen Titans. He does cross over from time to time to Batman, like with the crossovers of The Core of the Owls, or Death of the Family, or Batman and Robin Eternal, or Batman Eternal. But really, this is kind of where his home is. Eventually, we come up to the present day, where um, we have an event called DC Rebirth. It's not really a reboot of the DC Universe, but really just a reorganization of how the comics are approached. And Tim Drake leaves the Robin, uh, he leaves the Teen Titans team and joins back up with Batman in Gotham. And there he keeps the Red Robin persona, but changes his costume to look more like a traditional Robin costume. And he joins up with the team of Batman, Batwoman, spoiler, um, uh, Clayface, and finally Orphan, who is Cassandra Kane, formerly known as Batgirl. And that's kind of where we leave Tim Drake off. Um, right there, and I will get into that a little bit more when I talk about the reading order that you should have for Tim Drake as a character. Powers and abilities. Tim Drake is a normal, good old-fashioned human. He doesn't have any metahuman powers or magical abilities. Uh, with that said, that's not to say that you should take this character lightly. Tim Drake is a formidable hand-to-hand combatant, trained by the Batman himself and tutelage by Dick Grayson. He is an incredible acrobat, and he can hold his own in most forms of combat. Now, I might say that Tim Drake is not quite as skilled as some of the other Batman family members. I would definitely say the likes of Orphan, Batman, Dick Grayson, and Jason Todd are more skilled people than he is. However, that doesn't say that Tim is not skilled in himself. See, Tim doesn't outfight his opponent, but rather outsmarts him. Oftentimes, he's gone up against opponents that greatly outclass him, and rather than outfight them, he simply outsmarts them and he wins the day. To give you an example, and I will talk about this in the reading order, he goes up against Ra's al Ghul at one point. And while Ra's al Ghul, by all rights and means, beats him, it's really Tim Drake that outsmarts him and beats him. And that goes into another thing about Tim Drake is that he's an incredibly intelligent individual. He's second only to Batman as a detective, better than any other of the Batman families besides Batman himself. And Batman once commented that one day Tim Drake would outshine even himself. He's a master of computer technology and probably equal to that of Oracle at her peak. Um, He's an incredible strategic analyst and a great leader. He formed the Titans in the New 52 universe and took control of them in the previous pre-New 52 universe and during which he held the Titans together during some of the darkest times. Uh, Tim Drake has various different armaments and weaponry to his disposal. The basic stuff that Batman families have, grapple guns, batarangs, um, cost gas bombs, all the, the all the fun stuff that your utility belt would have. But Tim Drake is noted to have a couple things that were exclusive only to him. Uh, first and foremost, the R, the insignia on his uh, on his shirt or his armor was actually a shuriken that he could take off, and there were multiples of them, and he would use it as like a last ditch effort weapon, uh, which has shown up a couple times. In addition to that, he is also well known for using the bow staff. Each Robin is well known for their personal melee weapon. An example: Dick Grayson uses the Screamer sticks. Uh, Stephanie Brown is well known for using Tunfa. Uh, Damian Wayne uses uh, a sword. Jason Todd doesn't really use many. Um, melee weapons, he uses like sword and knives, but, and I would say the knife is really his, but he's known for using guns, pistols. 
Tim Drake uses the bow staff, and his bow staff can extend and, and uh, shrink in on itself, and it has many different functions to it, too, with shockers and tasers in it, and it can be separated if needed. Um, eventually, with his Red Robin costume, most notably his new 52 one, he gains a little jetpack um, on the back of him, which, uh, with his cape, extends to wings and allow him limited flight. Um, and his new Red Robin costume is a little bit more tactical uh, than his previous one, more armored, and has the capability of taking more blows to it than his previous armor, but loses his jetpack capability. So, hey, shit happens. With that said, like I said, Tim Drake is an incredible individual, and he can do a lot of things that most people can. He's incredibly smart and a genius at heart, and you know what's most importantly noted about Tim Drake is he works well with others. He's kind of the heart and soul of the Batman uh, family, um, You, along with Dick Grayson, but Tim kind of brings a lot of people together. He's friends with everyone. He doesn't hold any grudges. And that's kind of a hard thing to do in the Batman family. Like, you know, Jason holds grudges. Even Dick holds grudges. Batman is a grudge. But Tim Drake? Nah, he's he's copa with everyone. And even when he's pissed at people, like Batman, which happens from time to time, he eventually gets over it because he sees the greater good of the relationships and the strengths that are brought together with the characters. And one of the reasons, so which will transition over to why I like Tim Drake and why I think you should read him, is Tim Drake is such a relatable character. He joins Batman's crew not because of tragedy. If you look at the majority of Batman's sidekicks or part of his family, there's always tragedy involved in some way, shape, or form. Dick Grayson's parents were killed in front of them, similar to Batman. Jason Todd comes from a bo broken family with a father as a criminal and a mother as a drug addict. Orphans father is an assassin who teaches her only the language of violence. Stephanie Brown's father is a criminal mastermind who basically doesn't give a shit about her. Batwoman's father is part of the military and her mother and uh, twin sister was supposedly killed in front of her while uh, being taken prisoner. Most of the Batman family characters have tragedy next to their origin. The only exceptions are really Barbara Gordon, in a way, but most notably, Tim Drake. Tim Drake joins Batman because he sees the greater good of it. He isn't tied to tragedy, at least not at first. Tim does uh, have his share fair tragedies, both with family and friends. There's no denying that, although the New 52 kind of retcons it. But still, the fact of the matter remains is Tim joins Batman because he joins Batman because it's the right thing to do. And it makes Tim the most level-headed and even-keel character of the bunch. He usually has his head attached to him. And I think that's one of the most rewarding things about Tim as a character to read. Another thing that's great about Tim as a character is the fact that Tim is kind of a great balance between Dick and Jason. Now, Dick Grayson was Robin for a tremendous amount of time, from the late 1930s all the way up until 1985, before he became Nightwing. And uh, that's a tremendous amount of time, but he was always kind of the, gee willikers, absolutely Batman, and how, kind of, you know, Good, go uh, good boy, boy scout kind of psychic for Batman. It worked for Batman in the past, but, I mean, Batman went into a new era of comics, and they decided to kind of edge Robin off, which brought in Jason Todd. And Jason Todd kind of rubbed fans the wrong way, for whatever reasons it may be, one of which definitely was that he was a lot more edgier and a lot more of a punk, and he kind of disobeyed Batman a lot. And some comic book readers who are so used to Tim Drake, I mean, not Tim Drake, uh, Dick Grayson being Robin, didn't like the fact Jason Todd was so edgy. But Tim, Tim's kind of like the balance between the two of them. He's as level-headed and calm and loyal as Dick Grayson, but at the same time, he knows when he can disobey Batman. And that, yes, I won't go against Batman orders unless I know it's the right thing to go against Batman orders. He's a little bit of a rebellious nature to him, and you see this when he first joins the Teen Titans. But that's because Tim Drake is always looking forward. He's always seeing things at the bigger picture rather than just a narrow view that characters have. And that's one of the great things about him. He's relatable. He's good balance to um, the other Robins. And you know what? Another thing, and we're going to go into this with the reading list, is Tim Drake is probably the most successful solo Robin. Well, I will say that Batman works best with Dick Grayson as Robin back in the Dizal. 
Um, as an individual superhero with the persona of Robin, Tim Drake is without doubt the most successful, having the longest running individual series and some of the most interesting stories alone as himself. So, I think that's another thing that makes Tim Drake great. And you know what's another thing that I really like, and this is kind of a weird thing to say? Tim Drake's a fantastic fighter, like I said. And he's more of a strategist and being smart than anything. But I think that's one of the things that adds to Tim that's really fun. Is that he's not this godlike character that is undefeatable. You kind of look at characters like Dick and Batman, and they're just such at a high level of class with so many feats to them, that it's kind of hard to believe that anyone would have a one-up on them. Jason, you can kind of still believe because he, he can be a little, you know, uh, headstrong, but Tim, Tim's a normal guy. He's he's a skilled warrior, he's uh, he's a great at acrobatics, but he's nowhere near the level as Batman or Nightwing, and that kind of adds to the character because it's believable when he gets into these tough situations. Of course, eventually he thinks his way out of it, but, I mean, it's still believable and awesome to know that you can have that sense of tension and drama with the character. And Tim Drake, another thing great about him is he actually has really good relationships with other characters. Most notably, uh, Stephanie Brown, which he has a long-term relationship with. Uh, so those are some of the reasons why I think you would like Tim Drake. He's a very relatable and likable character. And in addition to that, he's kind of a balance between the other Robins and the heart and soul of the Batman team. So that's generally how I feel about Tim Drake, but let's, uh, let's take a break for a second and we're going to transition into the reading order. So, like I said, uh, Tim Drake has a lot to him, and what I'm deciding to do for the reading order for you guys for a suggestive reading is I'm going to give you a couple graphic novels, a couple comics, and maybe outside media like video games or television shows or movies that you can go into to kind of get to know more of the character. So, I'm going to start more of the comic end and then give you kind of like the, the, the other media stuff. So, uh, first and foremost, let's do the graphic novels. Um, I, I've tried to limit the amount of graphic novels that I'd say are essential for Tim Drake readings, because I don't want to overload you guys with like, oh, I have to spend so much money on this. I want to give you guys an opportunity to either digitally or in hard copy, pick up these graphic novels and have a short list in which you can get as much of the essentials of Tim Drake as you can without having to drop so much money. Now, with this said, this is just an essential list of the character. If you do want to go off and read more of the character, there's a ton of stuff um, in there that you can definitely jump onto. And while some Tim Drake loyalists may be like, where's this story, or why isn't this story introduced? Well, plain and flat and simple is because I wanted to streamline this the best I can for comic book readers. Uh, so with that said, without a doubt, the, the first thing you should pick up with Tim Drake would be The Batman, A Lonely Place to Die. Uh, this is a great story that tells the origin of Tim Drake, and it has some of the best uh, writers and artists at the time for Batman on this, or just in DC in general. You got people like Marv Wolfman, George Perez, um, on this just crushing it. Now, um, this is technically a $5 graphic novel, has four issues in it, uh, with some gorgeous art. Uh, and it gives you that origin of Tim Drake. Um, the one thing is, is at the time that I bought this, this is kind of a rare graphic novel. So it might be something better to get digitally if you can't find in your local comic store. Uh, places like Newberry Comics will not have this at all. Um, it's way too old. This is from like the 80s and 90s. So, uh, but um, I do recommend getting this because this is really the start for Tim Drake. And it, it explains everything I explained in its origin. And it's it's... Putting everything aside is a great issue because not only is it a great Tim Drake issue uh, it's a book, but it's also a great story for Batman because he deals with uh, Two Face in this and uh, re really fun. So, like I said, it might be easier to get this digitally, but uh, if you can find it in the stores, pick it up because it's definitely a rare find. I only have two of them and I've only seen two of them out in comic book stores. Uh, but yeah, digital. Uh, next I would move on to Robin at Hero Reborn. Uh, now this kind of takes place right after A Lonely Place of Dying and it's really kind of Robin's training uh, as a character. He goes up against multiple different enemies in this and this kind of establishes Tim Drake as Robin. Uh, fun little story. Again, very cheap. Only four bucks for this much of a comic if you find it. It's not that rare. You can find this most anywhere in a local comic shop. If they don't have it, 
like you can get this online on Amazon for dirt cheap or eBay. What's really cool about this is at the back of it, and it's a little faded on mine, but it gives you the Robin costume and kind of gives you a breakdown of the new Robin costume, which I thought was really nice. What's really cool about it is it shows like the Kevlar and the, the, the cape and how the cape would be able to span out and allow him to glide. What I particularly like is on the gloves, it shows like the, the knuckles have metal in there and then the blade of the hand for chops or knife hands um, have metal on there. So it's kind of a cool breakdown, but the story in itself is really good and you get to see a lot of Robin's training and you get to also see, yeah, Tim Drake's not the perfect Robin, but he's still a great Robin. And the art is gorgeous and beautiful, especially for the 90s era, which uh, kind of had ups and downs, but uh, really, really good stuff in there. Uh, moving on is Robin Tragedy and Triumph. Now, this is a really fun story. Uh, it takes place shortly after the previous Robin, um, and basically is is dealing with Robin's first fight with Joker, uh, and going up against the Joker alone, which is kind of a scary thing because he doesn't have enough training to go up against this psychopath. But unfortunately, this is also uh, where a big blow is dealt to Tim Drake um, emotionally and personally. Um, it's a fun read really fun read and it's really some of the height of the 90s when it comes down to Robin um, and you get a real 90s feel from this 80s 90s feel um, and I love the art and I love kind of the the dark deco that comes with it too if you if you look at it it really it does scream 80s quite a bit but it screams it in the best way 80s and 90s uh, the only thing I could say about this book that's kind of tough is you might have to get it digitally I've only found one copy and it's the one that's in my hand uh, it's a popular comic but if you can't get it physically and you don't want to get it digitally you can get the individual issues they're pretty common to find I have found them in my comic store so a Robin tragedy and triumph really good read uh, now, with that moving on, um, I do like this book a lot, um, is Robin Flying Solo. Now, this takes place during Nightfall, and if you don't know what Nightfall is, uh, Batman gets his back broken by Bane, and uh, he stops being Batman for a while, and a new character named Asriel takes up the mantle. Now, Asriel is a little cuckoo for Cocoa Pots, uh, you know, thinking he's part of a cultish religion and following the Lord St. Dumas, and Robin's like, yo, I'm not into that Kool-Aid shit, I'm gonna go do my own separate things. And this is kind of set when he goes off on his own. Actually, the opening begins with the new Batman choking him, and him, and like I said, he has that shuriken. He literally takes that shuriken and stabs it into the new Batman's arm, which is pretty cool. Um, but what's really cool about this, he kind of goes off on his own. We get to see a lot of spoiler, uh, which is eventually becomes Tim Drake's uh, girlfriend. Um, and we also see him go up against Clue Master, which, uh, while a minor character in the grand scheme of things of villains, was always kind of a cool villain to have for Robin. Not only with her tie, uh, his ties to Spoiler, which I won't spoil for you, no pun intended, but, um, you know, you get to see some greatness come out of this character, and you get to see the, the beginnings here. Um, but yeah, uh, Robin Flying Solo is a really fun book, and the art in this is just, um, really good for the 80s and 90s, top notch, um, it, it's a little, little bold at some points, but it, it really has some good stuff in there, so, um, I do enjoy this a uh, lot, of, and what I particularly like about the art in this is the facial features. You really get to see um, kind of, uh, you know, the characters really having a differentiation in their facial features. One thing that artists do a lot nowadays is all the characters look alike, if they're male or female. So, uh, But Robin Flying Solo is a fun book. Um, now, we're going to kind of move a bit away from his solo series, and you can pick up a lot of his solo series um, in individual uh, graphic novels. Or on um, or in the individual issues, uh, but those are the the ones mainly from the beginning that I want to point out because I think they're the ones that build Tim Drake the best. I'm going to involve one Teen Titans story, and that would uh, be Teen Titans: The Kids Game. Now, as you can tell, I'm jumping over the the Young Justice stuff, and maybe I'm doing a disservice to you on that. But I didn't really read Young Justice, and from what I've read, I didn't really feel it was essential for Tim. But this is uh, Teen Titans: A Kids Game, and while this uh, this story is basically the senior Titans, Raven, 
Starfire, Beast Boy, and Cyborg bringing in Robin, Superboy, Wonder Girl, and Kid Flash into the fold. And uh, what's really kind of cool about this is you get to see the difference in generations. You get to see how the characters interact with each other. Um, and you get to see how Tim Drake feels on a team. Uh, now, this is the only Teen Titan story I'm including. There's a lot of other good ones, and if you want me to, I can go into that later on the side. If you want me to, I can email you a list if you really love this. And you're like, damn it, I want to read more Teen Titans from the early 2000s with Robin in there. By all means, like uh, a lot of people love the run. Some people don't like the run. Some people are indifferent. Uh, either case, it's written by Jeff Johns, so you can tell that the writing will actually be good. Um, but um, I'm going to allow this to be kind of a, a door for you to open in for the character if you want to go closer into his um, into his team up stuff. Now the next two comics are uh, two graphic novels are 100% optional. Um, the only reason why I'm including them is both of them affect Tim Drake um, in his own series. So it, it would be nice to read and they're both really good comics but they're not necessary for this list. But I do recommend both The Identity Crisis and Infinite Crisis. Uh, two major events happen in these books for Tim Drake that will affect him going forward. Um, I won't go into detail what they are. Again, you do not have to pick up these books to, to enjoy Tim Drake at all. Uh, they only add to what's great about the character. Uh, they are heavy reads. If you're not reading stuff going up into this, you might be a little confused. You might be like, what the hell is going on? Uh, but if you're willing to uh, muddle through the continuity heaviness, at least of Infinite Crisis, you can kind of get away with an identity crisis, um, you'll find that there's some important Tim Drake moments in here. Um, if I had to pick between the two for you to get, get Identity Crisis, I think it's a better read, and I think it, um, I think it affects Tim Drake more. But again, um, that that these are optional. So, uh, moving on, uh, after the Infinite Crisis, DC did something called One Year Later, and basically what they did is uh, they they kind of fast forward their comics continuity wise a year uh, and you see characters change so Tim Drake changed a lot because he just had a lot of tragedy happen to him in those previous two events so I recommend reading uh, Batman Face the Face uh, now this is a very Batman and Robin story in um, the two of them working together so you get some of that great relationship um, and in this um, they take on Two-Face who was rehabilitated and surgically fixed and Batman left him in control of Gotham because Batman, Robin, and Dick Grayson kind of went off for a year to travel together and find themselves um, and Harvey Dent, Two-Face, was left in charge of Gotham probably not the best decision for Batman because Two-Face is slowly becoming cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs again so uh, this story kind of deals with Batman and Robin going up against Two-Face but it's also them dealing with what's happened to them in the past and it has one of the most satisfying endings in Batman history, and one of the most touching, beautiful, it will make you cry moments for Tim Drake. So, uh, yeah, uh, take a look at that. The, this this book is really good. Uh, and it's James Robinson, who is the man, and everyone should know it. In addition to that, you get the new Robin costume, which is right down there, which is mostly just black uh, and yellow. There's uh, black, yellow, and red. There's, there's, no, um, there's no actual green in there. So, uh, moving on, we have Batman, uh, City, uh, Batman, uh, Death in the City, and Batman Detective. Both written by Paul Dini. Now, these are both um, Batman heavy stories, but you get a lot of Robin in this. In particular, you get one of the best individual Robin stories, where he is abducted by the Joker, and he needs to deal with this Batman, and he actually beats the Joker on his own game. Uh, it's a fantastic story and a fantastic Tendrick moment. And um, I just think these two stories uh, need to be pointed out, uh, because, again, while they are very Batman heavy, and yeah, Robin's in it probably 50% of the time, I think you guys are going to enjoy it just for the quality sake, and for when Robin does show up, the, the quality of him showing up in the comic. Uh, really good. Uh, now, moving on, uh, as you know, Batman does go missing, and in it, uh, we have Batman Battle for the Cowl. Uh, now, this story is basically the three Robins trying to determine who will become the new Batman. Uh, Jason Todd, who wants to become Batman because Batman needs to be edgier and make those dark decisions. Uh, you have Tim Drake, who wants... Uh, Robin, who's more stable, and then you have Dick Grayson, who doesn't want to become Robin. Uh, now, while this is heavily Dick's story, because, well, Dick eventually is the one that becomes Batman, spoiler alert, um, I, I don't think it's that hard to see, seeing that he's 
the title character there. Um, Tim Drake is very heavy in this book. Very heavy. Uh, really good stuff done by Tony Daniel for the art and uh, for the writing. And Tony Daniel shows, his, I think, a lot of his earlier DC work here and does it very well. Um, but shortly afterwards, Tim Drake's comic is canceled as Robin, and we get Red Robin. So this is his new Red Robin costume. Again, this is his pre-New 52 one. And um, I'm including Collision and the Grail here, um, because these two eventually uh, lead up to a, a great climactic ending for um, the story arc between the two. You can read them individually, but reading them together, you really get to see Red Robin go up against uh, Ra's al Ghul, which is really cool. And, uh, and a really climactic ending that is very nice and enjoyable, and I, I had fun with it. And uh, some of this Red Robin stuff is very... Um, very underrated. I think a lot of people kind of put it aside and like, Red Robin, really? Yum, yum, or whatever it is. Oh, yum, that's it. Red Robin, yum. I don't know, I never had Red Robin. But, um, this is actually some of the, really some of the darker but better things with Tim Drake in it. And I really suggest people give it a read. Um, it's not necessary, but if you want to see Tim outsmart someone that really outclasses him, get this stuff. It's, it's good. And if you like more of the Red Robin stuff, you can pick it up. Uh, I think there's one or two more volumes. I know I at least have more over there, but uh, of the two, I recommend uh, Red Robin, The Grail, and Red Robin, Collision. Uh, now, we're going to go into the last bit of suggestive reading. Uh, New 52 happens, and we have the New 52 Teen Titans. I'm not including this on the list. Uh, you can pick it up if you like, uh, but the reason why I didn't include it is, while well, the New 52 brought in some really good stuff, it did bring in some stuff that was very mediocre at best. And I will argue that the Teen Titans was very mediocre at best. Don't get me wrong. It had some good stories here and there and some good moments here and there. But I just feel as though it's never found its footing. And because of which, it suffered heavily quality-wise. If you want to pick it up, by all means, there are some great Tim Drake moments in there. And there are a lot of Tim Drake kind of defining himself as a character. But in all honesty, you can actually skip that and go right into the Rebirth stuff. Now, there's no graphic novels for Rebirth right now, um, but it's a very great place to jump into. Good place to jump into. And you can actually start with this if you want, uh, but I don't recommend it because, again, I think some... It's really you should start with the other stuff. But this is only a couple issues in uh, with, Bat, uh, with Detective Comics uh, 934, 935, uh, 936, 937, 938, 939, and... Uh, 940, and um, that's where the most recent issue was. But this is uh, this is a great series. Uh, putting Tim Drake aside, it's just a great series on a whole. Um, James Tinian the fourth uh, or fifth, the fourth, uh, really does a good job building a team that includes uh, Dick, uh, includes Tim Drake, uh, Batgirl, uh, I mean Batwoman, spoiler, um, Orphan, Batman, and Clayface, and a uh, really good team, but. Uh, really great stuff in here with Tim Drake and uh, most recent issue has a huge shocker with Tim Drake uh, don't worry he doesn't die so don't think that, I think that's a lot of things thrown on the internet, spoiler alert, Tim Drake's still around, but a big big game changer happens here with Tim Drake, which is really cool, uh, and just on a whole this is an enjoyable series, so uh, after you're done with the Red Robin stuff, I recommend skipping the Teen Titans stuff and jumping right to this, um, and again, like I said, it's easy to get into, so you can go to your comic shop your local comic shop, or Newberry Comics or, or digitally and just buy these uh, these six issues six or seven issues right now and just put them aside for later and then go from there um, but really really fun stuff uh, so that's kind of the general reading order I have for uh, Tim Drake there's a lot of branches you can go off like if you like the Teen Titan stuff you can read more of the Teen Titans if you like more of his Robin stuff you can read more of his Robin stuff if you like his Red Robin stuff you can read more of his Red Robin stuff if you like him being with Batman like damn like pick up Nightfall pick up Hush pick up that stuff like but it's mostly Batman stories rather than Tim Drake stories. He's more of a supporting character. But with that said, I mean, Tim Drake's a great character to read. I recommend getting into him. Uh, with that also said, um, it's time for you guys to select the next, next character I'm going to allow you guys to get to know. And I'm going to do a theme again. Three characters. And the theme of this is going to be Justice League. So you can choose one of these three Justice Leaguers for me to kind of go into. Oh, uh, before I actually get into it, actually, um, for outside of comic books, uh, Tim Drake, Young Justice. Just watch that. 
that's I think the best Tim Drake stuff. Watch Young Justice. He doesn't show up in the movies that much. Shows up Batman in the main series, but he's kind of more like Jason Todd there. But Young Justice, watch that if you want some good Tim Drake stuff. And he does show up in the Arkham games too if you want that. But um, like I said. Um, Justice League is going to be the next theme for characters to get to know. So you can choose one of these three Justice Leaguers to get to know. You can choose the Green Lantern of Space Sector 2814, Hal Jordan, the greatest Green Lantern of them all. You can choose the King of Atlantis, Aquaman. Or you can choose the fastest man alive, Barry Allen. The Flash. So your choice of those three will, um, whoever gets the most votes is the one I'm going to be doing my next video on. So again, you have uh, Hal Jordan, you have Barry Allen, and you have Aquaman. We'll go from there. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please leave feedback, uh, feedback and comments below. And uh, if you want to support me and support my channel, please join my Patreon and uh, please support me there. So again, thank you very much. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.